in the fall means a little something different in the NWSL. Be it a double from Zabinia. A shutdown save from Ashlyn Harris. Or a league leading six goals from Christine Sinclair. For one more day in 2020, the NWSL brings its best on CBS. Welcome to Orlando, where the Pride hosts the North Carolina Courage in the first of two games remaining in the NWSL Fall Series. OL Reign and Utah will play later tonight on CBS All Access. Portland and Houston have locked up the top two spots. North Carolina still with a chance to finish in third. And what a pleasure it's been to have you with us for the past seven weeks on CBS. I'm Jen Hildreth, alongside former U.S. National Team midfielder Lori Lindsay. Lori, what's your biggest takeaway from this Fall Series? Oh, where do I begin, Jen? I have loved this fall series. We've seen professional debuts. We've seen first goals. We've seen U.S. Women's National Team call-ups. It has given so many opportunities to young players to rise to the occasion, and that is what pro sports is all about, taking your chances when you get them. And one of the players that consistently takes her chances is Lynn Williams from North Carolina, one of the most prolific goal scorers in NWSL. She can hurt you in a variety of ways, whether it's her runs in behind, her ability to find space in the box, or her aerial threat in and around goal. Lynn Williams, second all-time in goal scored in the regular season in the NWSL, trying to stop her on the other side, Lori, Ashlyn Harris. U.S. International, she is the most vocal on this team. She's the heart of this team, and she consistently comes up with match-preserving saves, and she's not afraid to put her body on the line when she's doing it. Ashlyn Harris back after missing the Prides match last week. She'll hold things down defensively. One of the biggest threats offensively is Sydney LaRue. For more on Sydney, let's welcome in Marissa Pilla. Jen, just last weekend, Sydney LaRue scored her first goal in 821 days. And this entire fall series has really been an opportunity for LaRue to show just how far she's come since giving birth to her second child, a daughter, Rue, last summer. And during quarantine, LaRue said the only thing that really kept her sane was her rigorous training routine that helped her get back into top form. She said she's starting to feel like herself again on the field and has rekindled her identity as an athlete. But the role as mom is never too far removed. LaRue has been wearing the names of both of her children on her cleats this entire fall series. Love that, Marissa. We will see Sydney LaRue up top with Marta today, Lori. In their 4-4-2, number three, Tony Presley back in the starting lineup. She'll add in some composure and experience to that back line, but it's going to be about number 10, Marta, six-time world play of the year. Can she help link play, but also get forward and get in more, take more advantage of that three back for North Carolina. And for North Carolina in the 3-6-1, it'll be about those two in the midfield, Perea and Malay. Can they screen that back line, but also provide balance for number 10, Dabinia, and Lynn Williams to get into the attack and create chances. Could be an emotional day for Orlando. It's the Pride's first game in their true home stadium, their last of 2020, and they're raising money and awareness for breast cancer research. Our kickoff from Orlando, next. systematic racism. Please join us for a 20 second moment of silence as we are all united against racism. Thank you. We are so very happy to have sports and the NWSL after being the first professional team sport to return to play during the pandemic now kicks off its final day of action in the NWSL fall series. Jen Hildreth, Lori Lindsay, Marissa Pilla, so happy to have you along with us for this one from Orlando. 
the pride wearing purple and the North Carolina Courage all in white. That's Dabinia number 10 on the ball for North Carolina. Marissa Vigiano number 23, an important part of that midfield for Orlando, especially as they try to build. Tony Presley, as you mentioned, Lori getting the start once again. Just added so much calmness and composure when she came into the match last week for Orlando. That was a loss against the Houston Dash. Denisha Blackwood there, number eight, couldn't quite hang on. And you're getting your first real look at how North Carolina has shuffled their players around. Not that many personnel changes for Paul Riley from what we have seen earlier in this fall series. But where they are in the field is different, as you will see as this one goes along. And that's been one of the important things for North Carolina throughout this fall series is trying a new formation, the three back formation, a box in the midfield, tough challenge on Blackwood. But the formation has allowed him to be able to try players in different positions. We typically see midfielder Lauren Millay in a more advanced role, but now she's in the defensive midfield role. Addison Merrick, who was just fouled, playing out wide, typically one of those three backs. So adjustments and ability to be able to move and shuffle players around has allowed him Coach Paul Riley to be able to get a good look at his players, where they can be most successful in this formation. I've seen a lot of experimentation, be it with formation or personnel with a number of teams, including both of these two in particular, with a lot of players who you might typically see not available for one reason or the other in this fall series. Orlando still looking to pick up its first win, the Pride 0-2-1 in their only action of 2020 after Orlando was not able to participate. They withdrew from the Challenge Cup over the summer after some positive COVID tests, really just days before that event was to begin. It has been such a tumultuous year for the Orlando Prides, the starts and stops, the, as you mentioned, the inability to play in the Challenge Cup playing a few games and having a layoff in the fall series. So the schedule has been challenging. But this is a team that Coach Mark Skinner has said has shown resiliency. He wants a fast start in this game to end off this fall series on a positive note. Pride trying to create something here. They'll find Abby Alinsky in the box. Alinsky on the ground just past the outstretched foot of Blackwood. That'll be Marta, the Brazilian superstar. A little short on her touch. Ball quickly the other way, could set up nicely for Lynn Williams, but Ashlyn Harris well aware of the speed of Lynn Williams there at the top for North Carolina. And well read by Ashlyn Harris to come off her line, reads the play well, as that's an area that Lynn Williams is consistently looking for, the ball over the top to stretch the back line for the pride today. And they're gonna need Ashlyn Harris to be proactive coming off her line to pick up any of those balls that are floated perfectly in behind. But already a good start from the Orlando Pride on the front foot. You can tell that there is more composure, there's more proactivity in their start than we saw against Houston last week. Yeah, Mark Skinner trying a couple of different players in the starting 11 last week and then also going with a different goalkeeper, Brittany Wilson, who really did quite well when called upon. But that Houston attack was a lot to handle as Ashlyn Harris was out due to a personal issue. Offside there against Lynn Williams, had a death in her family. So great to see her back for this final match of 2020 for Orlando. When you look how young this Orlando Pride team is, anytime you have a veteran leader like Ashlyn Harris unavailable, it just continues to make your team younger and more inexperienced. And that's one of their battles in this fall series is a lot of players opting out, going overseas. So playing younger players, giving them opportunities, but still need the time and the patience to be able to adapt to this level. Kerry Ricaro, who has slid into that back line for North Carolina. Out to Meredith Speck. to Binia. The 
Vinia touches it forward for Williams. Lynn Williams into the box, closely defended. Orlando does get the initial clearance and Alinsky will take it over. And Jenna said, Dabinia Lynn Williams combination that has been so dangerous for North Carolina for several years now, not just in this fall series. Veteran player, so dangerous, linking up. Something that the Pride are going to need to be mindful of today, making sure they squeeze the game. Don't allow those two players time and space on the ball. They but will hurt you. Both Dabinia and Lynn Williams named to the best 11 during the Challenge Cup for North Carolina. And courage and typical courage fashion really dominated the preliminary round. Did not lose their first four matches of the Challenge Cup, but then were ousted by Portland in the quarterfinals. Merrick does draw another foul heel here, and this will set up a nice opportunity for North Carolina on the set piece. We expect North Carolina to attack this right-hand side. Feels like that they can be the most dangerous going against Courtney Peterson today, the rookie for the Orlando Pride. Addison Merrick getting good herself into good advanced positions, looking to take on 1v1. Lynn Williams will absolutely be the target in the box on this set piece. Looks like some sun in the eyes of everyone could play a factor in this as well. Speck and Dabinia. Speck has that left-footed option. Dabinia can be deadly on set pieces. She does take it, sends it into the box, and it is headed down and out. Peyton Perea getting her head to the ball. And Perea does well. This one's taken in, whipped in from Dabinia. Perea just gets in front of her mark. Looks like Allie Krieger. And that one's just wide, snaps it up. Excuse me, snaps it down and far, just trickles past the near post. Peyton Perea, 23 years old, out of Wake Forest, was signed to a short-term contract before this fall series to join North Carolina. Sydney LaRue gets a touch, but right around the midfield line, she'll try to get forward. Jordan Listro back into the Orlando lineup, had to miss the last game after she picked up two yellow cards in the first two matches of the fall series. Ryan Williams, number 13 over to Ricaro. And on that last play, Jen, the Orlando Pride doing a good job of suffocating defensively, winning the ball back, but they've got to look to go out the other side because with the amount of numbers that North Carolina commits to the ball, the space is on the other side, but they have to be brave enough to be able to play that ball to break down the pressure. Marta and LaRue not quite connecting. Marta did well just to hold off the North Carolina defense initially. Curious to see Addison Merrick in this more advanced role for North Carolina. The rookie stepped right in in the Challenge Cup with a North Carolina roster that was pretty much intact. But they did have some injuries on the back line going into that Challenge Cup. So Merrick as a rookie jumped right in, I think was impressive right from the start. And it's a really good challenge for her because one thing that she's talked about throughout this year, whether it was a Challenge Cup being thrust into the starting lineup or even throughout this fall series is getting herself more comfortable going forward into attacking positions. Dabinia ready to attack and Harris ready for the save. And why not if you're Dabinia, we've seen her score from distance, open up the game a bit. But with Addison Merrick, feels so comfortable taking the defensive role and being able to defend 1v1, but it's the attacking side, her decisions in that final third that she feels needs the most improvement. So now getting that opportunity. This fall series has been a series of opportunity for many players. Dabinia just doing a good job of finding space in between the lines. We're already seeing quite a bit of room in that midfield space for both teams. Dabinia is the most dangerous when she pops off that back line, gets faced up and can combine with Lynn Williams or take shots from distance, create from that position. Dabinia 
28 years old. He'll turn 29 later this month. 85 appearances with the Brazilian national team. It's developed into such a tremendous player in that double 10 role that the North Carolina Courage typically likes to employ. Courage, the two-time defending regular season champs in the NWSL. Marta, the two number 10s from Brazil around one another for a moment. Now into the shadows it goes for Courtney Peterson, the rookie out of the University of Virginia. Her left-footed ball on the ground picked off by Ryan Williams. Listro fouled there by Davinia, so now a free kick for the Pride. And this is good play from the Orlando Pride. One thing coming in this game that Mark Skinner talked about was keeping possession, being brave in possession, getting Marta more involved in the game, being more impactful. We're already seeing her drop a bit deeper so she can help link play. If they can bypass that first line of defense from North Carolina, they'll have time and space to create in the attack. Caitlin Rowland will have to try to judge this ball coming from the shadows to the sun off one of the best left foots in the world. Marta bends it away, sets up the header. Blackwood in the box. The Jamaican International just could not get her shot off. Well touched there from Havana Salon, the newest member of this North Carolina Courage team. Salon signing a short-term contract at the end of September with North Carolina. Speck getting a lot more minutes in this fall series, trying to solidify her spot. The opportunities that have been given during this fall series, these players are going to look back and realize how special this moment was, even how, given how wild this year has been. Coming into the 2020 season, we thought there was going to be a Olympics. We thought a lot of things. Sorry. We did. Good point. <laughs> it did not We're still thinking a lot of things. <laughs> and it's changing by the hour. Indeed. Everyone having to adapt as best they can. Marta, LaRue, how about that combo? North Carolina stuck with it, though, not conceding the corner. Jordan Listro and Dabinia. Getting into it a couple of times in the opening minutes. And well done by Lucio to get back, stop any sort of a counterattack, and Dabinia getting on the ball. Got a glimpse of Paul Riley for a moment there on the sideline. Wins in any other coach in NWSL history. Two time NWSL coach of the year. Carolina looking for some options. Lynn Williams a good one. They wanted to try to get the ball to her more. Just felt like they have not done that as well in this fall series as consistently as they would like. The Courage coming off a 4-1 loss at Houston back on October 4th. So they've also had a little while to get ready for this one. And this is why you want to get Lynn Williams on the ball because she's drawing three players and then the yellow card from Edmonds. So this changes how Edmonds can potentially play the rest of this game. Is she more cautious? But Lynn Williams, how much attention she draws and it frees up other players like Dabinia Salon in that midfield coming through. So dangerous going forward. Will a set piece have a part to play in this match? We've seen a couple of good opportunities early here for both teams. See Abby Dahlkemper there. I've been had to call her name much, number seven for North Carolina yet. U.S. national team defender, North Carolina will play this short initially. Williams has some decision making to do. Back to Ryan Williams. No one clears it for Orlando. Kerry Ricaro keeps it moving forward. Marta back on it now for the pride. Pulled down by Ricaro. Natalie.
Ashley Simon, our referee this afternoon. Marta, one of those players who Mark Skinner said just wants her to focus on herself, be herself. She at times can have a tendency to get frustrated and you've talked about the inexperience. Oh my, that was almost a gaff in the back, but the inexperience around her and that could be frustrating to a veteran. And he said, just be you, because when you are you, you can be unstoppable. And obviously you want Marta as close to the goal as possible and linking up with Sydney LaRue, but anytime she can come back, help set play. Merrick gets the cross off. Merrick. Blackwood and Marta. LaRue at the top of the triangle. And that's a good ball. Just switch the point of attack, alleviate some of the pressure, see if you can go out the other side and it frees up the likes of Vigiano here in the midfield. Even if you're just probing, keeping the ball, it forces North Carolina to have to shift, have to run. And if you're patient, you can find gaps and break down their initial press. Alinsky coming back to help out win possession for Orlando. Kristen Edmonds starting at that right back position for the Pride today. She's one of those players that can be plugged in in a number of places, but Mark Skinner certainly wanting a better defensive performance than we got from his team last week in their loss to Houston. And a match in which they really did improve as that match went on, and a lot of that was some of the shifts. Edmonds went back to that outside back position. Tony Presley came on in the middle. <laughs> and Skinner did call it the tale of two halves in that game. Everyone went into the locker room. Didn't want to exactly tell us what was said in there, except that everyone was upset with the performance and knew, knew that it could be better. Wasn't up to their standards. Really challenged his team coming into this game to perform like they ended that game against Houston. Two first half goals for Houston in that one. They did not score again. Sydney LaRue scored, and here's a chance as Dabinia sneaks behind Dabinia. One on one, and the courage get the goal. And this has been a good start for the Orlando Pride. Patience in their attack, the build up, a faster start than we've seen. But just like that, North Carolina will punish you. It's Dabinia making the run out of the midfield. It's a turnover, easy win. And then Dabinia just sees the gap on the outside of Ali Krieger. And it's a good weighted pass in behind. And Dabinia does not miss from this position, just slots it into the goal, forces Ashton Harris to commit, and then pulls it to the near post. Turnover turns to a goal for North Carolina and Davinia. That's Davinia's third goal of this fall series. She scored her first two in one match, September 11th against Houston. Actually her first NWSL brace, although all of those goals in this fall series will be counted separately from both the Challenge Cup and the regular season stats. You see now Davinia joining that group of Three goal scorers, all trailing Christine Sinclair. What a performance the Canadian international and international all-time leading goal scorer had for Portland this fall. And Dabinia, consistently one of the best players in the NWSL out of that attacking midfield role, but also credit to their press, the way that North Carolina defends. If you can't bypass it, and they press you, then it's quick turnovers, and it's those runs out of the midfield that are so dangerous. And Dabinia times her run perfectly to get herself in the space. Abby Dahl Kemper. Paul Riley said really wanted to try to keep her central as much as possible to maintain that integrity of his back three.
Krieger. We'll be heading to the U.S. National Team camp along with Ashlyn Harris. Lynn Williams, Abby Dahlkemper headed that way as well for North Carolina. Merrick, smooth moves on the ball. Two rookies, shoulder to shoulder. And that's good positioning for Merrick. Just reads that Courtney Peterson is about to bite aggressively. Just puts the ball behind her back leg and then is off and running. Dabinia still causing problems. And we did see Dabinia score that goal in the 19th minute. For more on her, let's bring in Marissa. Dangerous players on the ball, but also one of the most creative. She was able to develop her style by growing up in Brazil because soccer there was everything. She said she always had a ball at her feet wherever she went, and she was able to develop her own style playing on the streets because there were no rules there. And Dabinia's comfortability on the ball has grown so much to the point that she told me she feels like the ball is now an extension of her. And she's very thankful that head coach for the North Carolina, Paul Riley, allows her to be herself and creative on the field. She may have stolen something here, Marissa. Was not able to finish it off, though. Well, she's not wrong. The ball is an extension. <laughs> so creative, so dangerous. I love hearing Paul Riley talk about it, how he challenged her to become fitter in her game, both sides of the ball. Goodness, has she risen to the occasion. Edmonds all the way up into the attack for Orlando now. Listro. Listro will try it again. And Jen, that was a good example of the space in the midfield. Once you break that first line of pressure, the two defensive holding midfielders for North Carolina are late to press the Lucio. The decision make making has to be better on top of the box. So just swing, switch the point of attack if necessary. Just link play, keep the ball longer than you are right now. To be able to take advantage of those opportunities. Brian Williams really trying out a different position on that back three for North Carolina. Has been more of the wing back for the courage. I mean, names like that, like Ryan Williams, that you wonder, will we continue to see it? And not just her, but lots of the players on the field for these two teams that are names you may not know that well yet, as in the fall series are getting an opportunity that they want to turn into a longer-term contract, a chance to be with the team, a chance perhaps to get picked up in the expansion draft, which oh. we just got some news about this week. And I was just gonna say that, it's, it's also where are we gonna see them? Yeah. Because with each team not being able to protect all of their players, obviously, it really becomes a question of who's gonna be available, who's gonna be protected. Lots of tough choices for coaches coming up. Speck drives it towards Abinia. Polinski. Marta. Diagonal ball is a beauty for Blackwood. Denisha Blackwood set up in the box. Ryan Williams hustled all the way back to take that opportunity away. And a great ball in for Marta to free up Blackwood. And it was a good first touch from Blackwood to set herself up, but that recovery run from Williams. Now it's Williams on this end. Lynn Williams in the box. Her left-footed ball saved by Harris. Ashlyn Harris had the NWSL save of the week in the first meeting between these two teams in the fall series. That was a 0-0 draw in North Carolina, and that came against Lynn Williams when she did it. <laughs> this game has opened up. Good ball in from Marta, and that's an even better touch from Blackwood to set herself up at the recovery run from Williams. 
makes it easy for Roland to be able to pick it up and then exactly what North Carolina wants to do, often running on the other end, look to see if they can expose Lynn Williams in a 1v1 situation, needs to do better in that finish. Lauren Millay, who had the beautiful ball to assist the goal to Dabini in the 19th minute. Maybe getting into the attack a little more here, even though she starts in a deeper position than where she had been earlier in this fall series. And it's a player that Paul Riley says reads the game so well, has actually preferred her in a more holding role to be able to see the ball, see the play, link play, and then also timer runs to get in. Malay, 23-year-old out of Colorado College, two-time Mountain West first team player. In her second year with the Courage, but had just two appearances last year. Dabinia. Quick turn from Ricaro. Met by LaRue. Williams still after it. And Harris not willing to concede any sort of a corner kick. Had a great chat with Lynn Williams this week. This tough is, for her to get to that one. It is tough, but this is where Lynn Williams says that she feels that she's at her best, whether it's a long ball over the top and stretching the back line or always getting in behind, just forcing opposing teams to try to track her, pick her up, asking questions of them. And at any time, regardless if it's a close-up little dink ball over the top, she's always threatening. I don't think Lynn Williams' ability to create has really ever been in doubt and what she's done in this league. She has been so impressive, a former Golden Boot winner as the leading scorer. And she's been in the top two in scoring in three of the last four years, 50 goals all time in the regular season in the NWSL that is second all time. And Paul Riley has very high aspirations in terms of where he thinks she can go. So fun to watch her development. And it's one of those things we talk a lot about the opportunities that the young players have gotten. Salon. Wide open is Addison Merrick. That first touch is better. She's got a shot in the box, unencumbered, but could not quite get the touch she wanted to settle. She was so wide open. I think it caught her off guard. Misses this ball. It's a poor first touch. You can't get around it. Instead of slowing things down, looking to see if she can recycle. Ops to go herself. Always rising on that one. But to my point, Jen, we've talked a lot about the young players. The players like Lynn Williams opting to stay, play in the fall series, continue to get better, develop in ways that they wouldn't necessarily have as a vocal leader with how many veteran players they have on this North Carolina typically. So she's been able to really continue to evolve her game, whether it's the little nuances in her runs, pregame speeches. And you think about players like Abby Ursig, the New Zealand international along that back line, Crystal Dunn, Kristen Hamilton, Jess McDonald. I mean, there are some big name players who are huge parts of this North Carolina team that are not a part of this fall series. Certainly the story for Orlando as well. 12 players out on loan, 14 if you include a couple more of their draftees. Vigiano, one of the best creators in the midfield. And Marta will earn the first corner kick of the match. Vigiano doing a good job in the midfield. Always being an option. Picks off to beat in, they're off and running. It's a little darting run in behind from Marta that wins this corner kick. Caitlin Rowland in goal for North Carolina. Both she and Steph Labe have been in goal for the Courage this year of 2020, both Challenge Cup and Fall Series. Now Marta's ready. Little bender on the ground, still in the six yard area. Blackwood has a crack at it, it's blocked. Back to Marta, one cut into the box, wants it herself, 
and thought perhaps at the last minute she'd have Alinsky alongside her. Blackwood into the box. Presley's turn. Up and out. Tony Presley, who is such a wonderful story as she has returned after a breast cancer diagnosis last year. This is a breast cancer awareness match for Orlando. She's also been a part of designing some of the t-shirts. I'm sure this is a very meaningful match for her as well. And for all of the Orlando players, they were really treated to something special before this game. The starting 11 introduced by their family members. Take a look. In the house, goalkeeper number 24, Ashlyn Harris. We love you and Allie very much and are so proud of you all. Midfielder, number 23, our team mentor, Marissa. I'm here to introduce you to forward number two. Sydney LaRue. Sydney Your head coach, Mark Skinner. The best daddy. Yay! Vamos Orlando. I mean, if that doesn't get you a little emotional, what did Mark Skinner tell us to? Seven months since he's seen that adorable little girl. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness is exactly right. I mean, regardless of what they've gone on, gone through on the field, just off the field, not being able to see his kid, his partner, just emotionally, the ups and downs that the Pride team has gone through throughout the last several months is actually quite unbelievable. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a reminder for sure of everything that all of these athletes and coaches and staff members have, have gone through and for Orlando in particular, a club that has put in all that work and much of it in isolation by themselves, did not get to compete in the Challenge Cup and now four matches. Four matches is what their entire year of 2020 comes down to. This is a good opportunity for Mark Skinner to be able to just collect his team off to a much better start than we've seen in the last several games of this fall series for them. But now can they regroup, continue to connect passes? Mark is involved in the game, exactly what Skinner wanted from her, finding good space in between the lines. Now can they take that extra pa pass, a little bit more patient in the final third when they get there? And Marissa, you've got more on that. That's right, and to Lori's point, Orlando really likes the possession that they've had so far, especially in the attack, but assistant coach Carl Green said, yes, they like how they're switching the possession of the field to open up space and getting Marta on the ball, but they think in the attack, they can start to get a little more success if they start playing Sydney Luru up top a little more directly. And that is one thing that Mark Skinner told us, Jen, coming into this game. They do want to build out of the back, but they're not afraid to go long in over the top to Sydney LaRue, especially with the three back that North Carolina employs. And those three back, mind you, do get stretched sometimes so they can continue to find Sid LaRue over the top and then Marta underneath. Space can open up and they can exploit those areas. Marissa mentioned it earlier in the match, but Sydney LaRue really gave a spark to this Orlando team coming out of the locker room last week against Houston when she scored just a couple of minutes into the second half. Her first goal since 2018 for coming back from the birth of her second child, her daughter Rue. How, how cute was Cassius, by the way, <laughs> trying to produce mom's name? <laughs> it was a tough one. <laughs> Abu, I'm just going to go with that. <laughs> I don't think I could get away with it quite as well as he does, though. Pride trying to pick up that first win of 2020. 
North Carolina Courage do have an opportunity to finish third in this NWSL Fall Series. They would have to win this game by three goals or more to oust Washington from that third spot, earn a little money for their community partner. Well, we've seen a couple of good moments from Merrick as she's getting into great positions, but you can also see a little bit of the inexperience in being in that position. And just shaking her head there because she knows she has to do better, but reading the game well, getting herself into good positions, being able to bypass Peterson with the initial receiving of the ball, that allows her the time and space. She just needs to slow herself down, her body down when she gets into that final third, just connect. Ball quickly to LaRue. She wanted Blackwood. The pass picked off by Orlando. Better cohesion from North Carolina. Better balance. Malay, Perea doing a good job of just screening those three in the back line, making it difficult for Orlando to find Sidley and LaRue right off the bat in terms of a direct ball dropping together as a unit. Edmonds will let this one eventually get over to Harris. I mentioned Washington, by the way. The Spirit at North Carolina played a scrimmage last week since there was an extended break there for the Courage before this match. That was a 4-3 thriller, which North Carolina wound up winning late, but I think got a lot of out of in terms of trying out some of these players in new positions. Well, one thing that I love, too, is we talked about the players on the field, and we were talking to Paul Riley. He's talking about ways that he can come become a better coach. Punch there from Harris. So he loves coaching the attacking side of the game. Gets so excited. Sometimes forgets the, the defensive side of things, and he knows the back three need to continue to learn and challenge themselves. He could see some offense right here. Lynn Williams, Dabinia quickly back into the fray. Ryan Williams will step to it. Merrick, back to Ryan Williams. Nice run in the box. Central ball. Lynn Williams. Still trying to challenge Ashlyn Harris, but her defense doing a good job in front of her. Blackwood initially does well. Does a tracker mark, but then makes up the ground with her speed. That led to this whole attack for North Carolina. And it goes back to why North Carolina is so good is the players coming through from the midfield, that box that they employ centrally Deep runs out of the midfield, and you have to stay with your marks because the over overloads are just too dominant in and around the box. That's better body shape, right? You can see everything. And Denisha Blackwood, an interesting player, too, to watch for Orlando. Jamaican World Cup member, along with Kanye Plummer, who's on the Orlando bench, and Havana Salon, by the way, who's with North Carolina. But Blackwood signed to a short term contract before this fall series. Trying to make the most of her minutes and figure out if she can stay in the NWSL. This is her first year getting a taste of this league. Valet. Up to Salon. Salon for Dabinia. Back for Salon and it's too high. Havana Salon will go down in history as scoring the first ever World Cup goal for Jamaica. Had a nice setup on that one. And this is the best play of the game for North Carolina. It's Malay that finds Salon in between the lines and it's the interchange between the two attacking midfielders, Salon and Dabinia. A good run out of the midfield for Dabinia. Find some time and space and Salon has got to put this away. It's put on a platter, perfectly weighted. She tries to come across her body, gets underneath it. Salon, another one of those short-term contract players with North Carolina. Her first year with the Courage, but fourth year overall in the NWSL. She played in Norway and was supposed to play in France earlier this year. COVID did not allow that to happen, but had played for Seattle and Washington earlier in the NWSL. 
And it's always interesting with some of these players that have kind of gone under the radar, but then they find themselves at North Carolina, and Paul Riley has a knack for re-emerging players and getting them excited. We talked about Dabinia, how originally she wasn't fitting into their system, then he challenged her to become a better player, fitter player, and same with Salon. He said he's extremely excited about working with her, has all the qualities to be one of the best attacking midfielders in this league. Good example of the interchange between her and Dabini on that last play. That, yep. Good look of Marta just surveying the scene. And wow, that may be what she was looking at. Some blood on the face of Sydney LaRue. sure where that came from but obviously something that needs to be looked at and taken care of this may be where this happened whose arm that was. Yeah. Looked like it could have been Linsky's on the way down, her own teammate. Either way, Sydney LaRue, a bit worse for the wear. See Kate Howarth there, warming up one of the wonderful stories from our EMS director and firefighter who's trying to keep her professional soccer career alive. Seen her come off the bench twice for the Pride in this fall series. But obviously, Sydney LaRue, a player Mark Skinner would like to try to keep out on the field if at all possible. So to see how well they can get this taped up. And of course, at, with a head injury, you need to make sure that concussion protocol is not in play, that everything is fine for Sydney LaRue to be able to continue. Yeah, only a couple of minutes left to go in this half though. Be important for Orlando just to make sure defensively though they're tight as a unit. Give Sydney LaRue the time to be able to just make sure that she's feeling okay, ready to go at least keeping the score line in the same, headed into the break. Sydney LaRue really trying to keep that career of hers revitalized going for the 30-year-old. She was a World Cup winner for the U.S. in 2015, a part of the 2016 and 2012 Olympic teams. And for Lou, I really feel like it's gonna be about just consistency been difficult after the pregnancies to get back and any sort of minutes that allows her to get played in and then with this season as we mentioned a number of times the ups and downs familiarity of playing with Marta and the surrounding players will be beneficial going into next season for sure and the good news is it looks like she is ready to go back in just maybe needed to adjust that bandage a little bit so she could see <laughs> small detail so Sydney LaRue awaits permission to return to the field. Orlando at the moment, a player down. 30 seconds plus some stoppage time remaining before the half. LaRue now returning. Just one goal so far. Came in the 19th minute off the foot of Dabinia for North Carolina. Dabinia on the ball once again for the Courage. Looking for that far corner, doesn't quite get it. Six minutes of stoppage time added on to our first half. Much of it accumulated as they were attending to Sydney LaRue there a few moments ago. And Dabinia continues to impress, whether it's the final pass that runs out of the midfield or just taking it on herself on the dribble. 
drawing players. You can see the little laughter between the two Brazilians enjoying themselves. But Dabinia just continues to look like she's having so much fun, full of joy out in the field, wanting to score, wanting to put herself into positions to be successful, and her team pulls that initial opportunity out, out, out wide. And you were talking before about Dabinia's development, and I, I seem to recall Paul Riley having some pretty colorful language about <laughs> Davinia not particularly liking to defend when she first came to North Carolina and the NWSL. This is her fourth year with the club. And he said, you know, to play her position, really to play just about any position, the way North Carolina plays, you have to be willing to defend. And she has built that and added that into her game. That plus an incredible level of fitness over the last few years as well. Which is a bit shocking to hear nowadays because she is one of the best defenders on the field for North Carolina. We talk a lot about her abilities in the attack, but defensively, she puts herself in such good positions, tracking back, picks off balls that allow her to get on those penetrating runs down the spine, spine of the field. It was a ball that the Courage and Lauren Millay picked off that led to this goal for North Carolina back in the 19th minute that Dabinia finished. Lestro up to the bandaged and battered, but still battling Sydney LaRue. Vigiano taking out Peterson. And Jen, I'll be curious if Blackwood can get wider in those positions as well and link up with Courtney Peterson to create a 2v1. It would ask more questions of that North Carolina back line, could potentially pull out Ryan Williams, expose some central areas for Marta to be able to exploit in between the seams. Right now, a bit too predictable for Orlando in the attack. Easy for North Carolina to defend. They want to get themselves back into the game. They've got to create the numbers up situations going forward. This is his second start, straight start for Blackwood. She's appeared in every match of this fall series for Orlando. Marta. Listro. She Krieger keeping connection, but now it's at the foot of Dabinia. Trying to send Lynn Williams, and the timing not quite right. And Listro has to do better. Get on the half turn so she opens her body up to be able to see all angles of the field. Instead, turns out wide, and it's predictable for North Carolina. And that's when they hurt you. Finding Dabinia in the turnover, in between the seams. And then that's a close call for North Carolina to get off on the front foot and transition quickly. the teams in the NWSL Fall Series had an opportunity to win some grant money from Verizon and the Verizon Community Shield. Top three teams will receive that money, so that's at play. They get to share it with their community partners. Lynn Williams is on side this time, punches it home, and the Courage double their lead in stoppage time of the first half. There's Salon running out of the midfield. There, out of the midfield. There's Lynn Williams making a penetrating run, and there's Sabinia coming out of the midfield as well. These three are making this team tick. But it's the ball in from Dabinia, bypasses the Salon, curves it into the path of Lynn Williams. So easy for her to put away. Just a few touches to compose herself. Ashton Harris does well to come off her line to make herself big, but still the whole goal for Lynn Williams to pick and choose which side she's going to go to, and just slots it low in that far post. And well done from Lynn Williams. He's known that she has missed a few easy opportunities so far in this game, but makes it up. Makes no mistakes about it with that one. So North Carolina moving a goal, a step closer to potentially getting some money to share with their community partner, 3-2-1 Coffee. Wonderful organization Marissa told us about earlier in this fall series where 
It's a coffee shop that employs individuals with disabilities as baristas and roasters. Another turnover could cause more trouble for Orlando. Dabinia will get to it. Dabinia and North Carolina has done it again. And not the way that the Orlando Pride would want to go into this break. Had limited some of the opportunities, the goals. Wanted to keep it at 1-0, and then it's North Carolina just finding ways to break through. It's too easy. The giveaway, Edmonds has got to stay wide. She puts Allie Krieger in a terrible position, can't break free, and then North Carolina reads it well. And Dabinia, anytime you get her around the goal, she is going to put it away. So Dabinia in her NWSL career had never had a brace, two goals in the same game. Well, she did that earlier in this fall series. She's done it in the first half today. North Carolina leads it 3 nothing after an exciting first half that finished with a bang for the courage. And you got to think that Orlando Pride is shaking their heads. What just happened in the matter of two minutes had the game fairly under control defensively, starting to build themselves into it. And then just two easy giveaways. It's the details that matter in this game, especially when you're playing against the likes of Dabinia and Lynn Williams. Two goals in stoppage time of that first half for North Carolina. And the courage just pouncing on the ball, taking it away from the pride. We'll really have to try to regroup here to finish strong in the second half. Paul Riley, always looking for a little opportunity to get some more instructions. He heads to the locker room alongside Kaylee Kurtz. So Davinia, a couple of goals in the first half, joins Marissa. Davinia, two goals for you in this first half. Why has your team had so much success in the attack? Well, you know, my teammates helped me a lot. So I think that's why I'm being successful. Uh, of course, I was in good, good spot. So I just need to enjoy the opportunity. We are doing this. Thanks for your time, Davinia. Thank you. Davinia helping the North Carolina Courage out to a 3-0 lead at the half. Coming up, you'll get a chance to see the team that won the fall series, the Portland Thorns, getting a special award that's coming your way after the break. Welcome back to halftime in Orlando between the courage and the pride. The Portland Thorns, the winners in the NWSL Fall Series. Earlier this week, Marissa joined NWSL Commissioner Lisa Baird to virtually honor the Thorns. I'm so excited today to award the Verizon Community Shield to uh, Portland Thorns Football Club owner Merritt Paulson and Captain Christine Sinclair, who did it with her six goals. You guys were undefeated in the fall series, and I know that that was exciting, but I also know that the meaning of the fall series this time was about playing for our partners in local communities. And I'm so pleased to award the $25,000 grant for first place to Mimi's Fresh Teas. What an incredible partner they've been with you. They're really all about racial equality and inclusion, and there frankly couldn't be anything more important that we're playing playing for. So Christine and Merritt, congratulations. Obviously, it's always nice to, to win. Um, it's an honor to be a part of this organization. And I think that the thing that sets this organization apart is its connection to the community. And so to be able to win this uh, grant for a, you know, a local business, um, it's very important to us. It's something we, we talked about heading into this series was that we wanted to give back to our community and uh, it's nice that we were able to do that. Christine, you guys did just that. You're known for such great fans and being such a great team out in that area of Portland. And this year was a real test for everyone. How did all the ups and downs, the Challenge Cup, the Fall Series help this team grow together? Yeah, I mean, it's been a, it's been a journey for, for everyone in, in the world, everyone in this country. Um, we're very fortunate for what we, be able, what we are able to do we're safe, we're healthy.
nothing else to say. I think that says it all, Christine. Congratulations, guys. <laughs> Congratulations, Christine and the Thorns. Well done. <laughs> Indeed, that does say it all. Great to see the team having a little fun. Well, we'll have some more fun here from Orlando. Lori and I will look back at the first half between the pride and the courage when we return. Tonight, the SEC on CBS is in prime time featuring a marquee matchup between two top five teams. So number three, Georgia challenges number two, Alabama. We get you set for the game with the drive to Atlanta at 7 Eastern, followed by college football today at 7.30, leading up to kickoff at 8. Tonight, the SEC is on CBS. And right now, the NWSL on CBS at the half. North Carolina leading Orlando 3 to nothing after a couple of late goals in stoppage time of the first half. Jen Hildreth, Lori Lindsay, and Lori in that first half, it was really take it away and make them pay for North Carolina. <laughs> it was, and that's how North Carolina does make you pay is the quick turnovers and then it's the runs out of the midfield from Dabinia or Salon. But really, it's been the Dabinia show throughout this game. It's a quick turnover. Lauren Millay reads the play well and then sees Dabinia on that back shoulder. It splits the two center backs for Orlando, and Dabinia just slots that one to the near post. Ashton Harris does well enough to come out, but when she's in front of the goal, Dabinia, she makes no mistakes about it, punishes teams. And then it'd be Lynn Williams getting on the scoreboard. A good ball in. This time it's Dabinia returning the favor in terms of assisting. Just curls it behind the back line. And Lynn Williams composes herself, slots at far post. Scoring not quite done. And again, Dabinia. This is why we said it's the Dabinia <laughs> show. She's making runs out of the midfield. So dynamic, so dangerous. And it's the one time because it's perfectly timed run and an even better pass in behind. Two goals and then an assist for Dabinia in that first half. We'll have the second half kickoff coming your way when we return on CBS. Davinia and Lynn Williams leading the North Carolina Courage to three goals in that first half. Courage trying to hang on if they can win this match by three goals or more. They will take third place in the Verizon Community Shield standings and receive $10,000 from Verizon to share with their community partner, 321 Coffee. One thing that anyone will tell you in this league is that there may be a lot of different faces, but the North Carolina Courage are still going to come at you like the North Carolina Courage. And we definitely saw that in the first half, Lori. The pressure from North Carolina really resulting in all three goals. And regardless of what North Carolina, the formation they're playing, the personnel they have, yes, there's going to be some differences in the level of experience and the details, but it's the principles that this team has been built around that sets them apart and the competition within the squad that keeps pushing them on to perform at a high level and get better each training session each game marissa at the half had a chance to catch up with the north carolina coaching staff marissa what'd you hear i asked assistant coach scott vallow where the emphasis will be now with a three goal lead in the second half and he said we haven't even been playing that well and he said we're not really a results driven team we're a process and mission driven team and he said there's about six or seven players on this field right now who need to step it up in the second half despite being up by three goals so he said we need to play better especially collectively on defense and that's the competition and the standards that we're talking about jen up three zero Dabinia show, but still feel like they can keep possession better than they have collectively, stay tighter as a unit defensively. And this is a coach and a team, Paul Riley telling us a few days ago that they're ready to attack the 2021 season. All of this is in preparation for that. Merrick, another nice move. She got herself free, but then some good defending collectively by Orlando to snuff that attack out. One of the things that this fall series truly has allowed teams to do is just what Marissa said, 
you are able to focus more on the process because the results, well, of course, it's very nice to try to get wins and compete and win some money for a community partner. This is different than any other match they will ever play at the professional level. It's not the Challenge Cup where you're playing to get into the knockout rounds and try to win a trophy. These are really more like friendlies, and so it allowed teams to experiment with rosters, with formations, with whatever they might want to build upon leading into 2021. And all the coaches will say that both of these competi competitions are so needed. The knockout rounds, like the Challenge Cup presented, how intense those games were, fighting to the end to, to sneak out wins, but then also this for development to get players looks, especially with the expansion draft that we've been talking about coming got to find players that can make a difference, can make an impact at this level. And this is given that opportunity. Vigiano pushing it forward. Back to Marta it goes. Marta into the box and out for a corner. Marta about to have a statue unveiled of her in Brazil. She takes a moment, though, to check on Ryan Williams, who's still down after that collision. And that was a tough challenge between the two players, Williams and Marta. But for the Orlando Pride, this is where you want Marta to be picking up the ball and running at the back line and forcing these defensive plays from a player like Ryan Williams. We didn't see that enough in the first half from the Pride. Marta, 34 years old, five-time World Cup veteran, all-time leading scorer at the FIFA Women's World Cup. Allie Krieger will let that ball go all the way back to Ashlyn Harris. Marta back onto it. Her left-footed shot will go wide, really more of a cross from that angle. But if you're going to play the ball long into Sydney LaRue, you have to have players coming underneath, whether it's Blackwood, Marta, to be able to pick the balls up and exploit that space in between the lines. Better start from Orlando. And a little challenge, too, isn't it, Lori, to see what this team is made of. It'd be easy for them to really hang their heads after giving up those two late goals and stoppage time of the first half. But this is it. These 45 minutes is all they have left in 2020. And you have to imagine that's what Mark Skinner, head coach of Orlando, is saying at halftime is keep your heads up. These are mistakes that can be corrected, giving the ball away too easily. But that's how you're going to learn, especially in the midfield areas where you have to control the little details about how you keep possession. And if you're giving turnovers and easy giveaways away, it seems like North Carolina will make you pay. That's how you learn. Carrier Caro over to Meredith Speck. Had an assist in the first half, Lynn Williams Time to run nicely. Back to spec. Beautiful looking ball, just not able to connect on that one. Spec, 27 years old, out of Yale. In her fifth year with either North Carolina or Western New York before that. And Marissa taking some big steps this fall series. Yes, that is absolutely true, Jen. And today, with all the minutes she's played today, she has now reached a career high in minutes played. And Speck has been with the team since its Western New York flash days, but has never played as big of a role for the team as she has right now, starting every single match for North Carolina in this fall series. Speck said making the jump from a practice player to a starter has given her a heightened sense of responsibility, trying to make sure she meets those expectations everyone has for North Carolina. And she said this team just means so much to her, and she wants to help represent it in the best way possible. We keep getting great examples of these players that are rising to the occasion, making the most of their opportunities. Pretty high up. She's going to pay dividends for all of these teams in terms of the depth, the versatility for players to make a difference next season. 
And you heard that Western New York flash reference from both Marissa and I, that club. A lot of those players transferred over to North Carolina and have done nothing but win in their time with the Courage. Western New York Flash were the NWSL champs in 2016 and then since 2017 in North Carolina. The Courage have won the Shield, the regular season title three times and the NWSL championship twice. Presley and Salon both battling for the ball there. Saw Scott Vallow, assistant coach, and Marissa talk to chatting with Paul Riley. Blackwood finds Vigiano. Peterson places it in the box and Roland quickly out for it. Turnover. Can it be Orlando's turn? to make a turnover count. LaRue in the box. Her shot is saved. Roland had it coming in as Vigiano and Orlando does get on the board. And this time it's the Orlando Pride that makes North Carolina play, pay. It's a quick turnover in the midfield. Cindy LaRue does well to find this ball off of Marta and just uses her awareness and then pulls that across frame. Roland does well on the initial save but gets gives up the rebound and then it's the fight to get in to first and that's what you want to see if you're Mark Skinner for his team just to fight to make a difference. Topo that one into the back of the net to cut the lead three to one. Doing credit Vigiano too for just wanting that ball more than anybody in white did for North Carolina. Vigiano is a player that Skinner has said reads the game so well, understands spacing. He's like a good player for now and the future for the Orlando Pride. Good to get her a goal under her belt. Confidence can do wonders. Orlando's playing with a lot more of it right now. Listro. LaRue, as you pointed out, Lori, took that initial shot, which was saved nicely by Roland. The rebound was what was put away. The North Carolina won't be happy with that, just knowing that Roland does well to get down low into that hard shot from LaRue. But gives up the rebound, and it's Vigiano is the one that reacts the, the fastest from the furthest position. Merrick, rookie out of Kansas, over to Salon, former Florida Gator. Gabinia, toying with Edmonds. What a touch over to Williams. Maybe a little too much time for Lynn Williams trying to pick out what she was going to do next. Did have two defenders right on her back, though but their understanding of one another. Dabinia and Lynn Williams just continues to grow. Exciting partnership for North Carolina. Those two, certainly the two biggest names carried over from the North Carolina team that played in the Challenge Cup to the fall series. Lauren Millay. Lynn Williams not quite ready for that ball. Williams called back into that U.S. national team camp. Was 
not a part of the World Cup team after having been in with the U.S. a couple of years before 2019. And when we talked to her, I really loved how she explained all of that to us this week, Lori Lynn saying, I just wasn't giving my best effort. She was too nervous to make a mistake. So now she's just going to be herself when she goes into camp. Merrick once again gets it through. She has done well, at least creating enough of an opportunity to get the ball central from that outside position. To take on 1v1, look to see if she can get face up against P Courtney Peterson. Here is Merrick again. Speck up for Malay. Malay one times it. And right now it is sideline to sideline in this attacking third for North Carolina. Malay spins Zelensky in a circle. Zelensky returns the favor by a Nice slide tackle there, but it does go out. Should be a corner kick coming for North Carolina. You got next couple yeah, subs got getting set to come into the match for both teams. You carry Lawrence, Haley Harbison. Ready to make their way onto the field. But first, this first corner three, kick three, of the match 30, for North Carolina. 30, typically earning corners, one of those things that you see North Carolina do and take advantage of so well. Ryan Williams back into play. That's Dahl Kemper. Out of her reach, though. Now those subs will come into the match. Kerry Lawrence, player out of South Carolina initially, and then University of Central Florida, will replace Blackwood. And Lawrence, a defender who's had really kind of an up and down showing so far, something really good, somewhere she's still showing some work that needs to be done, in the words of Mark Skinner. So she comes on, and then you saw Haley Harbison, a player coming back from injury. After last year, was the number nine pick in the 2019 draft by North Carolina, tore her ACL though, so just now, starting to get back into form. She replaces Salon. And with the substitute with Kerry Lawrence coming in, it'll move Kristen Edmonds, who was initially playing that right back position, to the left midfielder, and Kerry Lawrence will occupy the right back spot. One of the games, Lori, where Lawrence was really good was in the 0-0 draw against North Carolina earlier in this fall series, had a goal line save in that one. Bell Kemper's ball headed down by Krieger. Edmonds now in that more advanced attacking position, as you said, with the substitution, make it a run for it. Williams wants to take on a couple of Orlando defenders. She does well. Sets it up perfectly for Speck in the box. Speck can't put it away. And this is the area that Lynn Williams continues to grow, which is creating chances for herself and for others. Consistently throughout the game, she just spins the back line for the Orlando Pride, finds the space in behind gets on a dribble and then that's a good ball back to set up Speck who is now playing that attacking midfield role with Harbison going to the left winger position. And Speck has got to put that away. When a ball is weighted perfectly, you're able to time your run. You have to at least get that on frame and force Ashlyn Harris to make a save. LaRue brings it down, soft touch. Back heel to Marta. Marta turns the corner.
Merrick. for Lynn Williams. She played set up on that last attempt. She'll try to do so again for Speck, who's really getting a lot of the ball since she switched into that 10 position. And that's a good player for North Carolina in terms of her versatility, being able to play as a winger. And when Paul Riley talks about looking into the future years in terms of having fluidity with their personnel and their formation, Speck is a player that can fit in nicely because regardless of how you are playing, she can rotate in terms of her positions and still make a difference. And the plan, according to Paul Riley, is to be able to shift fluidly between these systems and formations in a game as needed. The box midfield that they have been so successful with and put fear into opposing teams but the numbers up situation in the midfield, continuing to go with that structure just looks a little different around it. The evolution of the box, if yes. you will, at North Carolina. Which is always a little scary to think about in terms of how well that box midfield has done over the years. Dabinia, a big part of that in the attack for North Carolina. The attack for North Carolina not only has been good, it's been record-setting good in the NWSL in their time atop the standings the last few years. They've set records for goals, points. Certainly proven to be a very threatening team offensively. Dahl Kemper. Still alive. Del Kemper is given some rain to attack from that three back, the center of it. Haven't seen it all that much in this match, really at all. Just another Big wrinkle that we could see more of going field. forward. <laughs> more attack. One, one of the 15 wrinkles that Paul Riley gave <laughs> us. Yes. Scenarios leading into this game. Courage have had to share some of that spotlight that they have owned so well the last few years in the NWSL in this year of 2020, the Houston Dash claiming their club's first ever NWSL title of any kind by winning the Challenge Cup over the summer. And the Portland Thorns, the team to win in this fall series, the only team without a loss. And that's a bit of what I was talking about with North Carolina's attack and how good it has been over the last few years. Merrick going for it, a little high over there toward RBG in the stands. But what you like to see from Merrick is the fact that she continues to go. She continues to take on 1v1. Not the end product that she'd be happy with throughout this game, but the willingness to continue to try to attack. It will take time in terms of her to get familiar with this position in a more advanced role. But once she starts to make connection and has variety in her distribution, we're causing teams some trouble on that right-hand side. And you think about this young player who 
was a center back in college. She's played on the outside of the back line for North Carolina. Now in that wing back position with some more attacking responsibilities. So has a lot of natural defensive tools, was the Big 12 Defender of the Year in 2019 for Kansas. And a ton of speed. Her coach, Mark Francis at Kansas, saying she's one of the fastest he has ever coached in his 30 years. So you add a lot of those pieces together and you see a player with a ton of potential. Ashlyn Harris trying to get things set in front of her as North Carolina readies for the free kick. Speck and Dabinia over the ball. It'll be Dabinia in the box for Williams who hit the crossbar. And it's just too easy. Lynn Williams just breaks out, times a run really well to get on the end of this. And the question is, where is the Orlando defense? No one's marking up. Three North Carolina players attacking that ball. Lynn Williams just gets underneath it. Unfortunate for her, because she does make good contact. Turnover. Malay, Dabinia. Presley hustled over to block that shot. It will be a corner now for the Courage. And how fortunate are we to be able to witness a player like Dabinia continuing to grow, just so dominant. MVP of the NWSL championship game last year, Dabinia. Fights her way back onto the ball, takes it away from another Brazilian, Marta. Ashlyn Harris uh, interview that she and Allie Krieger did this week with The Athletic and she talked about truly the struggles of having so many players with so little experience and that's no fault of their own. I mean 10 players in this fall series made their Orlando debut. Nine of them made their NWSL debut so they are really learning on the fly. And she talked about how that was really challenging because she is a player who's never going to lower her level, her mindset. She said, I can't do it to just to be more understanding. The exact quote there was, I can't bring my mindset down. I can't show up to training and be less than what I usually am to be more understanding. And it's that leadership though that will pay off going forward just to continue to set the standard continuing to find ways to compete Everybody all set? You know, give those younger players Edmonds into the box her left footed shot will score and just like that Orlando pulls it within one North Carolina might have fallen asleep there a little bit And Edmonds finds just a little bit of space. And this is where North Carolina can be better. Their back three getting stretched. Edmonds doing a good job of finding some space in between the seams. It's almost like she's in shock that she has that much time and space, but does well to get it on the left foot to be able to bend that around. Roland screened initially. And all of a sudden, 
Orlando's pulled it back in, into one after all the opportunities that we've seen North Carolina have. Yeah, I think that halftime report Marissa gave after talking to the North Carolina coach is pretty telling. They realized that, look, they got two goals late in stoppage time in the first half, which they created off of turnovers. But it wasn't a great first half. The score line would make you think so. A three-goal lead at the half, you're going to feel pretty good. But it needs to be better. And in this second half, it's not been good enough for what their standards are, what their expectations are. And this is why you had hoped Orlando would have been able to get more pressure, more numbers in and around the box, more consistently throughout this game so far, because there are areas that they can expose going forward, especially with North Carolina still trying to figure out this back three. They do get stretched. There is space when they do stay tight to get a, around them. Just saw it. that defense was nowhere to be found on that Edmonds goal. And they just haven't been able to get into those positions consistently enough throughout this game to take advantage of it. Chelsea Washington, number 31, came into the match, replaced Abby Alinsky for Orlando after that last goal. Marta on the free kick. Marta will take it. Tets it up toward LaRue, who lines herself up, but didn't make great contact. Sydney LaRue playing with that bandage after her collision late in the first half. The NWSL is partnering with Rally the Vote to spread the message about the importance of voting in this critical election year. One in five Americans are not registered to vote. Now is the time, be sure, to make your voice heard. Register, make your plan to vote this November. or earlier, a lot of early voting opportunities going on right now. This goal kick goes right to Marta. Once again, it's great recovery. This time it's Malay who gets back to snuff out any sort of opportunity. But this is how Orlando is going to get themselves back into the game, continue to find Marta underneath that back line, running at them creating opportunities, whether it's off of set pieces, pulling those midfielders back for North Carolina. Marta from the corner, bent in with her left foot, and in the sunshine, Caitlin Rowland is able to hang on. Kristen Edmonds, I think, just got caught in the crowd there. And Wound up on the ground for a moment. <laughs> Haley Harbison, 24 year old out of Pepperdine, getting back healthy. The CBS Sunday night movies are back every Sunday in October. And tomorrow, get together for Lori. Lori. Yes, it's Ferris Bueller's Day Off, in case you didn't catch that reference. The CBS Sunday night movies tomorrow on CBS. Lori <laughs> got really nervous. To laugh. <laughs> what am I supposed to be saying? <laughs> Great movie, though. A lot of fun. And we all could use a little fun. I think sports have given that to so many this year thinking back about the year 2020 for the nwsl so much to be proud of the first professional league to return to play they did that in the challenge cup the houston dash ultimately raising the trophy in utah and this is a team that really wanted to come into the 2020 season and revamp the way that people looked at their organization they did a, did just that with consistency and goal scoring opportunities. And this is another player that has really found the back of the net throughout the fall series. World leading goal scorer, Christine Sinclair.
She led the Portland Thorns to the Verizon Community Shield in this fall series. And say hello, my name is, to all the rookies who are making an impact. Five of them getting their first goals as they get onto the field. And as for what is coming next, Lori, we got this timeline this week. We now know the NWSL expansion draft to get Racing Louisville up to speed will be November 12th. And that means teams have to start thinking about who they can protect. They can protect up to 11 players. And of that, just two U.S. allocated players. So much excitement, so many question marks, and so many tough decisions. <laughs> for these coaches and organizations. Heard so many of them say they want to keep the consistency of their teams. Difficult to think about losing any player for this expansion draft. Yeah, sometimes the coaches will say to us, we'll ask about a particular player and they'll say, well, they're playing really well, but I hope they don't play so well that they get <laughs> stolen away because obviously only being able to protect 11, you leave I'm sure a lot of players that you would like to make sure you hang on to unprotected. Especially when you look at this time frame too and all the time that they put in to develop players, not only, only individually, but to get them on the same page for how you want to play and then to think about having to lose them. It's always a tough call. It's the nature of professional sports though. Well, Orlando well understands that. Orlando, an expansion team in their own right, joining the league in 2016. Dahl Kemper getting set from the corner for North Carolina. U.S. national team defender lofts it into the air in front of the goal. It was there for the taking. And out of that hydration break, Marissa, you were able to talk to Orlando. I was, and I heard head coach Mark Skinner telling his team to step up, and they need their mindset to be tough right now. Assistant coach Carl Green said that they've done a good job building themselves back into this game, but they need to be direct and win all those first contacts, be more forceful with headers and 50-50 balls. He said we need to be aggressive. We only have about 15 minutes left of the season, and we need to make the most of it. And it's those controllables that Mark Skinner has talked about throughout this entire fall series. They can talk tactics all they want, but if they don't come with the intensity and the mindset to at least get three points in every single game, have a winning mentality, the tactics don't mean anything. See how his team responds to that challenge these last 15 minutes. That mentality, maybe that some of that mental element that Ashlyn Harris, I referenced, was talking about earlier this week in that article in The Athletic. Marta to Edmonds. He'll stay with Orlando. Another one of the storylines for this year. We had to wait to see the NWSL on CBS in the first of this multi-year partnership. Of course, the season thought to have been started in the spring. That didn't happen. A lot of things got changed, but we had the Challenge Cup and now this fall series. And the numbers recently coming out, it is a shortened season, but the viewership numbers year over year up a mere 493% for the NWSL, and you love to see opportunities like this one. Lynn Williams once again gets behind, but skies it too high. Another golden opportunity, though, for Lynn Williams. Oh, and Lynn Williams knows this should be in the back of the net. This is when she's at her best. The game gets stretched. She can find the ball in behind and does well to look for the diagonal ball, just cuts in uses Ali Krieger's momentum against her. Riley Basin coming into the match for the Courage, replacing Meredith Speck. Another player out of Pepperdine, with Harbison and Basin, and of course Lynn Williams, all Pepperdine products. Lynn Williams actually helping to get Riley Basin 
brought into the team for this fall series. She's on a short-term contract. Said she couldn't believe it when she got that call from Paul Riley. <laughs> well, I guess Lynn Williams' recommendations, Paul Riley took her at her word and said, yeah, we'd like to see this player. So sure enough, he called up Riley Baisden and would like to give you a shot. This is where Orlando has to push the pace. Keep the ball in as much as possible. Keep a rhythm. As soon as the ball goes out, can they find it? Get it back in. Create as many opportunities as you can these last 10 minutes. Carrie Lawrence came into the match, earned herself an assist on Edmonds' goal. Perea up for Williams. Krieger, better angle on the ball that time. A little unlucky that time for Lawrence, but now the ball will belong to Orlando. Vigiano. Is there one more for LaRue? Dahl Kemper saw that Roland was way back in her goal. Didn't play it back. But that's exactly what Orlando has to do. Play long balls over the top, get the runners coming, put North Carolina under pressure, facing their own goal, and force them to play out with that three back. Lawrence over for Presley. Dabinia tripped by Listro. Jordan Listro picks up a yellow. That was her third in three games in this fall series. She had to miss a game after picking up two in the first two matches. And it's the heavy touch by Listro that gets it past her and to be able to pounce on it. Reactionary foul. Abby Dahl Kemper, one in the air by Presley. Ricaro. Teams are allowed five substitutions in this fall series. And Listro will come off. Allie Heron, the player to come on, former Wake Forest Demon Deacon, another one of those short-term contract players for the Pride. I want to take a moment, too, just to thank everybody that's been involved, both through the Challenge Cup and through this fall series, all the operations and technical team that pulled these games off and were able to broadcast them for you during a pandemic. Very appreciative of everyone. Our NWSL Director of Broadcasting, Dana Rubin, great partner to work with. NWSL Executive Producer, Michael Cohen, and Coordinating Director, Mike Roth. Oh, yeah. At CBS, Julie Carrick, Steve Karasik, Seller Shy, and Vista World Bank. Our friends have done a tremendous job as well, led by Josh Lemer, Mike Friedman, our producer, Sharni Yerke, director Gage Tillotson, and Marissa, Lori. Love working with you guys as many games as we've been able to. Marta nearly interrupted that. Moment of thanks, I would have allowed it, but not quite. The feeling is so mutual, Jen. Always a delight to 
be alongside you. And we've fun to call these games. Yeah, I was just going to say, we've had a lot of fun and look forward to more years, more games on CBS with this NWSL partnership in the coming years. Mentioned Marta's statue that is going to be erected in Brazil. It'll be right next to Pele and a museum in Rio. And they're adding a wing, I've been told, entirely for women's football, which big hand clap over here for that. Certainly those ladies and what they've done. Marta, a huge part of that, deserving silver at the World Cup in 2007, two Olympic silver medals, 2004, 2008. been such a force on the field but off the field as well in terms of driving women's football forward so impactful and you wonder how much longer we'll get to see marta out here playing the game we've had her in the united states both in the nwsl and wps where all she did was win championships every year and lead the league in scoring every single year in the three years of that league's existence so 34 years old Marta very much wanting to pass the torch to some of the younger generation, but to keep it moving forward for Brazil. Certainly the other Brazilian wearing number 10 in this game. Davinha <laughs> is a great one to help with that. Exactly, exactly. When you think about the, the generations behind Marta, goodness, we're seeing Davinha live right now and how special she is. Danica Evans, Kaylee Kurtz coming into the match for North Carolina as Merrick and Malay head off. Evans, number 28, there at the top. You can see Kurtz in the back line. Riley Williams has moved up on the field. Ryan Williams, excuse me. Just under a minute to play in this final match of the NWSL Fall Series for both Orlando and North Carolina. One more match still to come in the NWSL Fall Series. OL Reign and Utah later tonight on CBS All Access. If this scoreline holds, the Washington Spirit would take the third place spot in the running for the Verizon Community Shield. Portland has first, Houston second and North Carolina at halftime looked like they were on their way to third but they'd have to win this game by three goals or more. Dabinia such a catalyst in the first half two goals and an assist but then Orlando coming back with two goals in the second half Marissa Vigiano in the 54th Kristen Edmonds in the 71st to make this a one goal game. Four minutes of stoppage time added on. Jen Hildreth, Lori Lindsay, Marissa Pilla, happy to have you along for the NWSL on CBS. Dabinia's corner right along that six yard line. Harbison takes her time to set it back up for Williams, who did stretch out to get a toe on it. Ashlyn Harris in the right spot. And that's not the first time that we've seen that type of opportunity. Lynn Williams just spread out, though, trying to get a toe on it. As you mentioned, Jen, just can't get enough. This is a team that just continues North Carolina to find ways to put Orlando under pressure. Whether it's Dabinia making runs through, whether it's Lynn Williams stretching the back line.
Marta and Orlando perhaps looking to make a final stamp on this season. Do they do it? They do! Off the set piece, the Pride have equalized. And for how dangerous North Carolina has been in the attack, they've been just as susceptible on the defensive side. And a substitute Heron coming in unmarked, gets away. Actually, North Carolina does pretty well to stay with her. She just muscles herself and able to get ahead on them, slot that one far post. You can see Roland's reaction. She can't do anything about it. And this is exactly what Orlando needed in terms of the resiliency and the performance to fight their way back after a tumultuous 2020 season for the Pride. Molly Heron, not long after coming into the match, introduces herself in fine fashion, getting on the end of that ball from Marta. And this sums up <laughs> the reaction and the relief and the excitement for the Pride. After all they've been through this year, the ups and downs, what this means to this organization and this if this goal line stays the same this will feel like three points for the pride to be able to come back a month ago tying north carolina 0-0 and then tying it back up late in this game 3-3 yeah you think about in 2019 north carolina beat orlando three times they outscored the pride 14 to 1 in those three games so to then come into this fall series and have your two results against North Carolina be a 0-0 draw and now perhaps another draw. And again, this is not the North Carolina team that you're going to see in 2021, but it's also not really the Orlando team you're going to see in 2021. So give a lot of credit to these players who are out here who never stopped fighting. And you love the lipstick and you love the smile. <laughs> And Orlando right now, as soon as this ball gets put back into play, they've got to find a way to just get it out of danger. Clear it, get it into the stands, stall time. And take that point. Edmonds slow to get up. Orlando finishing last season in last place in the league, wanting desperately to get 2020, their second year under Mark Skinner, off to a better start. Obviously, they had to wait a long time to do that. They had to wait until this fall series. They only had these four games, and now after trailing North Carolina three to nothing at halftime, the Pride come back with three goals in the second half to take the draw. Three three is our final from Orlando. We'll be back to wrap things up and say goodbye in a moment. Stoppage time goals in both halves playing a part in our final score line. North Carolina three goals in the first half. Orlando three goals in the second half capped off by Ali Heron's goal in the 90th minute. Two minutes into stoppage time to tie it up. For Lori Lindsay, Marissa Pilla, our entire crew, I'm Jen Hildreth. For more NWSL highlights, CBS Sports HQ has you covered. We'll see you next time. <laughs>